Moss. Hello, Wendy Stewart. This How- was supposed to be my pilgrim hat, but I couldn't. I for, I didn't have time to get a buckle to put on the front. So it's imagine- fine. You know what? I immediately recognized it as a pilgrim hat. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to If These Walls Could Talk. You know, I have to say something. We're right before the holiday, and everyone else is cooking their turkeys, doing their carrots, their sweet potato casserole, but Tim me. Moss and Wendy Stewart Kaplan are here for you today. That's right. Yes. That's- Fabulous. I, dropped, I I just pushed the turkey in the refrigerator and the ham. And I mean, I'm doing the full thing tomorrow. You, you are. And I just, you know what, Tim, I do want to share um, two things of generosity today. Uh, not only is Tim cooking a feast, he has put it up on social media. If you are wanting to share Thanksgiving with someone, come, come to Tim's, which is There's not plenty. generous, right? Because so many people are alone. People, you know, the holidays yeah. are hard for a lot of people. Yeah. And I had a, several people contact me and they're coming over tomorrow. So I can't wait. I'm looking. Well, if you know that. what, if I were in town, I would do that as, as well. And I have a number of people that we mutually know that are yeah. going to be alone. And I would have brought them. So I, I surround myself with people that are big hearts. And our producer, by the way, Chauncey Dandridge. Chauncey. Um, Fixing uh, the holiday fixins for Sylvia's Place, which uh-huh. is an amazing organization. Yes. Also takes donations for winter coats. Uh, they help homeless youth. So please keep them in your thoughts. And um, if you want to make donations, you can actually, you can reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with Chauncey, but we'll totally make it happen. Yeah, this, I mean, this is all about what it's Friendsgiving and it's about gratitude and being thankful. Yes, absolutely. That's, it's called Thanksgiving. There, so. there. <laughs> there you go. I am, um, we're, Alan and I are actually going to visit uh, his niece, so I'm not cooking. Nice, nice. Let, you know what? Let's put our cards on the table. We all know the real blessing is that I'm not cooking. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will get sick. No one will end up in the house. <laughs> I won't be frazzled. I, you know, the, the best kind of cooking to me is in someone else's house. <laughs> <laughs> So, Tim, you have been like, I'm so happy to have you with us today. Yes, yes. I've been out for a couple of weeks. I you've was been out. out for a couple of, and, and you've been missed, by the way. Oh, thank you. I was out, yeah, I was out in the Midwest, out in Indiana, visiting my father. He's 94 right. years old uh, in an assisted living home. And I I wore that poor man out. You know, I, I was like, come on, dad, let's go here. Come on, dad, let's go there. Grab the walker, let's go. And uh, we we were all over all over the place, but you know we what? had a ball. We that, had a ball. He had a ball. You add, you added time to his life because you, you were a spark. And I think what was so cool, you know, I know Tim is from the Midwest, you know, which like to me is like a foreign country because I grew up in the Bronx. <laughs> but um, all of these pictures of Tim's family and friends that you've had for years eating in diners. You guys are, were always eating out and. Yeah. All of those people that you were really able to reconnect with. That's a gift. It was really, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. It was really cool. I got, yeah, to have a meal here and there with different friends. We would run into old friends while we were out and it, it was really, it was quite amazing, you know? And then all I, I took him uh, to Rochester one day and uh, this friendly guy comes up and dad has his veterans hat on and he said, thank you for your service. And, then we sat sat down and he comes walking up to the table and he says, he goes, let me introduce myself. I'm the mayor of oh Rochester. And I said, oh, well, that's nice. And so then he comes back a little while later and he said, I've given these pins out to several veterans. And he goes, and I want to I want to uh, honor you with one. And so he oh. made a speech and he gave dad this pin, which I put in his on his hat and. Yeah, it was just it was just totally random, totally random, but it was absolutely wonderful. How how amazing. Well, now, I I haven't looked down the entire list, but I'm guessing Chauncey um was nominated for a glam. So, so the glam awards. Um yes. oh, which to our dismay, Tim and I weren't. Um I just had Chauncey <laughs> read me the list who was nominated and it definitely went more uh how should I put it in a drag direction, which is well, fine. it always does. It's the right. drag community, you know, which is right. fine. Yeah. It, it is fine because and all a lot of those people are friends of ours. Yeah, so, absolutely. But, but absolutely. Video, of course. Um, and I'll be I'll be covering it. I'll be covering it and our dear yes. friend Ica Valley. 
for right. the show that I do with him. Was- was nominated as well for his incredible show, 50 Shades of Gay. And now that you put it up, which I'm a part of, which which I'm a part of. Yeah. Right. Right. And um, I've been a part of uh, December 3rd at the Triad Theater. Get your tickets. You can go right to Icavelli's page. That's December 3rd. Um, The name of the show is, wait, Mary, whose child is this? (laughs) Mary, whose child is this? (laughs) Of course it's that. So yeah, you definitely want to um, catch that. And um, Uh, also it's January 30th. So I'm definitely going to, Yeah, I'll be there. I'm going to cover it. We'll all 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 have a table uh, there. So please get your tickets for that is always super wonderful. You know, nominated or not, it's a really great evening and and a chance to really serve up some looks. Yes, yes, yes. Pull out the stops. Pull out the stops. <laughs> now, also, I'm asking everybody, please. Um, uh, I just found out that there is a special going on. I am doing. I was asked by Urban Stages to do my one man cabaret show. Yeah, yeah. On December seventh at nine o'clock. It's on West Thirtieth Street, um, and they're running a, a Black Friday special. And if you just put in all caps, B L K. F-R-I for Black Friday, B-L-K, F-R-I, um, you will get $10 off. So instead of $30, cool. you'll be paying it. It's a $20 ticket, but it's only good if you buy your ticket by Sunday. So okay. I would love if anybody and everybody to come out and and um, and support because I'm very, very proud of this show. It's As, it's really- as he should be. It's a wonderful show. It really is about Tim's life. So incredible. You'll laugh. You'll cry. And yeah. if you forget the information he just told you, it'll be on his Facebook page. <laughs> yes. Actually, I just posted about the I just heard about the the Black Friday special. So I was I posting it. that right before we came on the air. So get your tickets while you can. Yes. So Absolutely. talking about incredible performances. Well, well, just um, firstly, yes. firstly, we have another announcement. This is if the thank you for tuning in to If These Walls Could Talk with your host, Wendy Stewart and Tim Moss. And we will back be back with our wonderful guest, the fabulous Louise Sorrell. Take it away. <laughs> so I'd love for you to meet today's guest because when you see her, you're going to know her. Yes. All right? She's been daytime soaps, Santa Barbara, Days of Our Lives, One Life to Live. She's played a seductive villainess, okay? And when you see her clip, you'll you'll know her immediately. When you see her face, you're going to know her immediately. But what a career from theater, yes. film, TV, Hawaii Five-0, Gunsmoke, I, Kojak, <laughs> and she did a theatrical, I think it was theatrical, but she'll tell us more with one of my favorite all-time performers, Art Carney. I love this woman she is tv film and soap opera royalty and i want to just thank laurie tower for bringing her on today please welcome louise sorrell yay is that a good morning (laughs) it's it could it's morning if you know what i like that because you come from california and it is morning in california that's That's true. true Right. Thank thank you for all the people that are not EST, Eastern Standard Time. It's PST, Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> <laughs> so wherever you're tuning in from, uh, welcome, Louise Swell. And thank you so much for, yes. for being here. Yes. How are you doing, Louise? Hi. Uh, I, I'm awake. I'm here. <laughs> oh, she's, good. Oh, good. excuse me. She, she's more than awake. This woman is woke. <laughs> and we, and we, will, we will totally get into that later. She is absolutely woke. And already um, I see we have so many people in the chat. People were very excited about oh, you look at that. coming mm-hmm. on. To, I know. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> the chat. It's oh, great. Amazing. It's amazing. And it like scrolls up where people, uh, I, I don't know how to scroll it though. <laughs> Oh, good. Neither do I. Well, but Tim does. <laughs> Tim is our magic scroller on the show. So, you know, sometimes with scroller. technology, we have to depend on the kindness of others. I loved, um, I read quite a bit of information on you. Well, there's quite a bit of information on yeah. you. Yeah. She, Uh-oh. Louise oh, sends me yeah. her her bio and information. And, and then she sends me something and she says, I'm surprised I'm not dead. I mean, I just, <laughs> could, that is like... Who no, sends I, that out to I somebody? I wrote a piece called Thelma Ritter's Dead, I'm Not. 
I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I'm, I, I'm still yes. here. Um, I'm going to start with a very broad based question uh, for you, but it's something I've been thinking about. You are still here. What's your secret? What is your secret for, no, to have worked every aspect of this industry? I haven't a clue. You're just. I, I just go along, you know, and just, uh, I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's jeans. Well, my mother's name was Jean, but I meant the other kind. Of <laughs> it's jeans, jeans. Jeans, jeans. <laughs> it's, it's, it's jeans, jeans. Well, um, it's interesting because when I was, your, your parents were both in the business yes. as we, hmm. as we say, and uh, there's some people that were just born to do this. And I yeah. really got the feeling when I read everything about you, job to job, to job, to job, it really never, you know, some people, especially nowadays, oh, you know, that so people difficult. get hot really quick so and then they yeah. disappear into the sunset. Yeah. You well, sustain. Mine was sort of just on an even keel, just. Well, it could, you could say boring, but no, it wasn't. But yeah. it, it just kept, I kept working and I was very lucky with a very wonderful agent who became a very close friend of mine. I love and that. She was, uh, I mean, it was like having a, a mother, I mean, you know, a, another mother. Can we talk, she say her like, name? Is it? Yeah. Phyllis Rabb. She was the William Morris office and she uh -huh. was handling Arthur Penn and oh David Merrick and all these wonderful nice. things. Right. And she was, um, yeah, she she sent me every letter that was ever written to her or that she sent out before she died. Wow. Um, and I don't know why she handed it all to me, but I was so moved by it. I don't know what to do with it. So but you but you have it. I have as as you everything. as you should, Just, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like saying her her name because I always I believe, right? The people that have been so influential yes. to us when they move on, we want to keep their their legacy going. And you've yeah. got these letters. Yeah. And yes. we want to talk right. about the great stuff that they did. Now, you yes, grew up in Hollywood. Yes. Well, as I said, I grew in Hollywood. <laughs> Love that. So where did where were you? Were you born here or in? Well, I was born in, in Hollywood. In Hollywood. Well, yeah, I was that's right. in Lebanon. Um, it's a very well-known hospital. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, that's where I was born in Los Angeles. And uh -huh. we lived partly in the valley. And then we moved to uh, Beverly Hills. Sort of. mm -hmm. Nice. So that's where I grew up and went to Hollywood High School. Not everybody How can cool. see that. H H S. Along yes. with there's so many that have come oh, out god. of there. Oh god, yes. So did you realize early on in the game that you were going to be an actress? Well, I start. I went to. I took a class, a, a drama class. When they ask you to fill out a form in high school, what do you want to do? So I, I thought drama, that sounds easy. So I went to drama when I was 14 because I was in school early, in high school early. Mm -hmm. And the teacher that I got was very charming and he saw something. So he just threw me on the stage doing John Millington Sing and all Medea and Serafina <laughs> and the Rose Tattoo. And I, I, I would go home and weep and I said, Mommy, I can't do this. But she had this all in her. So she said, yes, you can. And she would talk oh, me through it incredible. and no. gave me this gift. And, but no. she never pushed me. She just right. gave me what information she could. She gave you information, but Louise, the essence of, you're talking Medea, yes. the essence of being able to embrace that has to be, no one can teach you that. Well, no, but I mean, God knows I wasn't a real Medea, but the, the real Medea she did it. was Judith Anderson, who was my dear friend later on. Dame, Ju Dame Judith Dame Anderson. Judith. And I... Uh, there was a wonderful moment with her when I first met her when she was trying to find a name on Santa Barbara. She didn't like the character's name of Birdie. So she was saying, <laughs> I, don't, blame I her. don't like that. I don't want that. <laughs> so I popped in. I just met her. I was in a bathing bikini. You were in a bikini? Horrifying. <laughs> and I said, what about Medea? And she said, looked at me, she said, Medea, my dear. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Medea. So... That's how we first met, and that and so that Medea or Medea has been, and I have a brilliant photograph of her playing Medea that's in oh, my yes. apartment in black and white with her hands. Yeah, I mean, she's amazing, she's absolutely brilliant. Oh, absolutely. that's fabulous. Brilliant. Now, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to If These Walls Could Talk with your hosts, Wendy Stewart and Tim Moss, and our wonderful and lovely guest, the fabulous Louise Sorrell. So what made you decide you went to Hollywood High School? Yes. What made you decide you needed to be um, in New York and aim for the great white way? 
Well, I went to two years of LACC with a uh, theater department, which was quite good. And there he let me do Cleopatra. And all it was all filled wow. with this. And then my friend, friend of mine came back from New York and I saw she had a program or something about it. And I thought, I've got to get out of here. <laughs> For a lot of reasons, which I won't go into. You know, I wanted, I wanted out. And I was 18. And my parents said, how are you going to do that? And I, I got a job. Uh, to pay for my airfare to go to New York. And I, by, oh, first I found, I auditioned for the Neighborhood Playhouse in at UCLA as a mime, because I was a mime at the time. I was doing mime. And I- I love this. <laughs> I, I, I got the, I didn't speak. I mean, I did mime. And they hired me. I mean, they gave me a, um, uh, what do you call it? Scholarship. A scholarship. The neighborhood yeah. Playhouse. Nice. But right, Kim? Nice. Great. Miming. And then I got, I- made my airfare and I got on a plane when I was 18 and I found about, out about the rehearsal club, which is famous. You know, there's a movie, all everybody in the world saw that movie. And that's where I was for about a year until I was thrown out. They th Wait, why did they throw you out? Because I flooded the laundry room. With oh, huh. I, I, <laughs> wait, 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 I need to know, was it intentional? Yeah, tell us that one. <laughs> Tim and, and I, I, uh, <laughs> I had also a boyfriend that kept coming in and she didn't like that. Mrs. Okay. It was whatever, probably you know, the boyfriend. It was the boyfriend. I think <laughs> that, you know, club, I was rooming with one of the girls who was a rocket. Oh, right. uh -huh. you know, the rocket stayed there and the young girls who were on a, on their way to a career. So that's where I started. Am uh -huh. And then I slept all over the city. <laughs> I, I swear, I thought she was going to say, and then I slept with everybody. <laughs> I was going to say, honey, so did I, but in a different way. But that's another, oh, that's another yeah, show. Yeah, Tim Moss. I knew he was on, on that one. Um, oh, my goodness. So, uh, so I mean, you, but your experience at the Neighborhood Playhouse, was it strictly mine? Or once you were there, yes, were you? No, no. Maybe, oh, neighborhood Playhouse is, neighborhood uh, yeah. Playhouse, no. Yeah, it's, it's like. No, but, that, but you got the scholarship for mine, correct? No, no, no. no I got a scholarship to study. <laughs> not for mine. She just happened to mine. No, I, mean, I thought that that was, that was your maneuvering to get in there. Because oh, yeah, that was. Neighborhood Playhouse is a brilliant school. Yeah, it is brilliant. So, who are some of the who are some of the people oh, you went to school well, with? Because uh, I used to getting to James Kahn was yeah there. who we love. My dear close friend Jessica Walter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Brenda Vaccaro. There were a whole bunch of us. Brenda Vaccaro, yeah. the best. Elizabeth oh, that Ashley. gravelly voice. I yeah. love. Oh, hi, hi, ah. hi, doll. <laughs> hi, doll. <laughs> hi, doll. <laughs> you, you, so now, how? Because you ended. How did you enter Broadway? You entered Broadway with um, in the show with Art Carney, correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, okay. I I got my father knew a producer on Broadway. He didn't want me to even do this, but he said, "All right, I'll help you." So I was introduced to I don't remember who it was a Broadway producer who said, "You don't want to be in this business." And that's the first thing he said to me. Good, and no, but, said, that, but that's you know what? Me, don't don't tell me that. But that's a so, test. Yeah, but, but anyway, I didn't pay any attention. Of course. But he said, I'll send you to someone out of courtesy. That's all. He said, and he sent me to Phyllis Rabb at William Morris. I didn't even know what a William Morris was other than it was, isn't it a cigarette? A cigarette, oh. yes, right? <laughs> so, I, right. <laughs> so I went up there and I met first Sue, who was her then secretary, who turned out to be Sue Mengers. Yeah, Sue Mengers. Oh, my secretary. God, of course. And I was brought into Phyllis's wow. office. And she she was a, she had big glasses and she had a talk she talked like this I don't know what you can do but I'll send you up <laughs> so she said this is where you're going she didn't have a, had no idea what I, if I could do anything she sent me to meet Judy Abbott Mr Abbott George Abbott's daughter who was introducing I mean in uh, meeting all these actresses and actors to test for this play. So she saw me, and I, I probably had hair down to my waist. She said, could you come back looking a little more collegiate? <laughs> right. So I Not so messy, a little more. Yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah. I don't know. So anyway, I showed up again, and then I had to read at the Broadway Theater. And I, I had only been there once when Ethel Merman oh my was God, doing what an act to Right. <laughs> so I couldn't believe where I was going. There was a lineup of we were all the same age. All, and same type, I would think. Types. Yeah. Uh-huh. I saw everybody following the stage manager around on the stage. A powerful woman, fabulous woman, scary, but wonderful. And I thought, I'm not good. She's gonna follow me. So I went upstairs to think about it. 
and they called my name and I said, I'm not ready and I cannot believe this. The, pay, the stage manager said, Miss Sorrell, George <laughs> Abbott, Mr. Abbott, Miss Sorrell is not ready. I was, I, I, I don't know what possessed me. Anyway, I finally came down and said, I'm ready. Oh, Miss Sorrell's ready now. Hey, darling, that's you, a, you that's made a lot answer. of chutzpah, oh, as we say. God. Oh my God, darling, I mean, honey, you're young, right? Honey, you're not thinking, honey, you made an entrance. Yes, you did. <laughs> you made Bruce Mitchell follow me around the stage, and I only got through half a scene. And I hear from the dark in the back of the theater, "Thank you," and that's all. And, like, and you were, you probably thought, oh, yeah, done. done, done. Then they brought me back for the second time, and the same thing of halfway through a scene. Thank you. And you just think you're going to die. I mean, you don't know what to yeah. do with yourself. Right, because you think they thought you were awful. Well, then you don't know what they thought. Right, right. So about two weeks later, I had no money. I was living with this crazy Italian, and we had a basement apartment and enough to call, put a dime. Remember a dime? It, a dime yeah. in a phone booth? I was going to say. Exactly. I was here then. And I called. It's, I got my answering service, which I was able to pay for it. Actors phone, actor phone. Is you were an actor phone? Or was it callback? Oh my God, well, I love it. Yeah. So they said, call Phyllis Rabb. So I said, okay, I had what, my dime. Your last dime, Louise. And I called her <laughs> and it, I heard it. I remember it hitting the phone book and, and she gets up. Hi, are you sitting down? <laughs> I said, what? No, I'm in a phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> Standing. She said, oh, you got down. the part. Then I heard three words. Incredible Not, story. Uh, four, four words. <laughs> and I slid down. I wrote all this. I slid down the phone booth onto the ground. I, I was shaking. I, I, I don't know what went on. And then I had, I've got to call everybody. I called Your everybody. Parents, yeah. Call my parents. Yeah. And that was the beginning. Oh yeah. my God. That's great. I, but talk about starting at the top. I love it. How old you? 21. I figured 21. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's well, amazing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into If These Walls Could Talk with your host, Wendy Stewart and Tim Moss, and our wonderful and fabulous guest, Yay. Louise Sorrell. Yay. <laughs> that was the start of it. Yes. When you first started rehearsing, I mean, you were the newbie, really, in the cast. Oh, no, no, no. no. There were well, no, Liz actually had done something before that. Um, there are a couple of other people who hadn't done very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so sometimes there's safety yeah. in numbers in those situations. Yeah. Oh, it was a know. lovely group of really, really sweet. So, so what was that? What was that like? The 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 initial yeah. because you're new and fresh and yeah. now you're 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 rehearsing for a Broadway show and Art Carney's in it and on the same stage, Ethel Merman was. Well, no, we didn't. She, rehearse. You didn't rehearse there. No, okay. No, no, no. Uh -huh. I was, was going to say that was like no a lot of stuff. You know, it was like, you know, if you've been doing work all along, if you're you know, at the neighbor playhouse, we did productions there. Of course. Know, right. It occurs to you, except that you're sitting there and you're just trying to do the, the work. best you can. Yeah, the work. And mm -hmm. you, you do, it doesn't, it comes later. It's sort of like, oh my God, it was George. At, what? <laughs> you don't uh, think about it. And Hal Prince. Hal Prince, Hal my Prince, God. The prince. Uh, he was yeah. a prince. This man was such a prince. And it was his first show without Robert Griffith. Hmm. And then he went on to Fiddler. He did a few things after that. Um, but it was, I didn't even know who these people were. I right. didn't even know who George Abbott was. I just was doing, <laughs> rehearsing a play. No, you were, you were a kid. And that's the yeah. freshness, by yeah. the way, of being 18 or 21. You come in, you don't know who anyone is, no. but you bring that, that freshness yeah. to the role. Yeah, you just go that's, on stage yeah. and do it. And then what happened from there was astonishing. So, yeah. Can, can you take us on the astonishing ride? That was <laughs> truly astonishing. I, I was in the show then by then about eight, seven months, something like that. Now that I'm cool. sorry to interrupt, but that was um, Take Her, She's Mine. Take Her, She's take Mine with Art Corny. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Phyllis called me. You're going to meet a man named Boy Hamilton at the Pierre Hotel. I, said, I don't uh -oh. know. That. What are uh oh, at the Pierre yeah. Hotel. Right. <laughs> it's a movie being done in London. Jack Hawkins is producing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I, well, again, I walk into this room at the Pierre Hotel, and they, I thought I was going to read because that's what we do, you know, you want to. Yeah, this. right. This man, hello, it's lovely to meet you. He looks at me for about <laughs> 15 minutes. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm gone. <laughs> now I'm doing the show, and it's intermission, and Ruth Mitchell, the stage manager, said, Louise Sorrell, come downstairs. 
I didn't. I you had no because idea because they went to see the play. Which was oh, so uh, horrifying! You already that saw that you worked already. But they, I didn't know they. Of go course, it's a silly comedy. So I come downstairs and there's Jack Hawkins, Anthony Perry, Guy Hamilton, three these men oh. downstairs backstage at intermission. Yes, extending their hands and saying, yeah. "Well, see you overseas." That's incredible. That's out. incredible. Oh, so they didn't. So you didn't even have to worry about the second no. act. I was going to say an intermission. <laughs> <laughs> go back out for the second act. <laughs> she was a pro. She didn't walk off the set and say, "See you later." <laughs> oh my god, that's wonderful. Isn't that oh my great? god. It, but what could have been better for them than to actually see you work? Like you said, oh, I'm in some silly comedy, but yeah. you were in a very real yeah, play with incredible actors. Comedy. But so, but mm -hmm. it, you know what, Louise, and you know this: people that have vision can see, and they have. Yeah. Well, the Brits don't do a lot of. Re this is interesting. The Brits do not do a lot of reading of actors. They know what they want. They're very uh -huh. driven over right. there. They don't put you through hell. They just see it and they know. Uh -huh. Maybe now I don't know what they do, but. But the other thing about that was I also, I had also gotten a pilot for Woody Allen. Oh, my God. On my way to London, I already had a pilot for Woody and another Broadway show. Huh. This was I just, it was like mushrooming. Like, I'm not making this up, you know. No, no. <laughs> oh, my God. When I look back at it, I feel like Gloria Swanson. <laughs> was, I, I just can't deal with that. That was me that was doing that, if you know what I mean. It's out of body, sort of. <laughs> Wait, but you're you were incredulous about it, but you because you're a young you're a young kid. I just kept, and working. you know what? It ju you just kept working. Exactly, and, and that that's a reality. You know what? Yeah, Everyone was again, you don't like you that. don't have you don't have a point of reference, so you don't panic. Right. Right. You just do what you do. Yeah. That's wonderful. like okay, that's I have to be there. Doing. I'm working. It's work. The other, you know, the thing about it is that there were so many things that happened that were so amazing out of nowhere. And as you get older, it gets so much more difficult and you're not prepared because mm -hmm. you start out and people are handing you everything gigs. on a silver platter, not handing, but you yeah. know, it's coming so fast. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, whoops, not so fast. And that's what yeah. you have to, you have to find out who you are because a lot right. of actors, unfortunately only feel they're alive when they're working. Oh, and isn't that's that very dangerous yeah. because I luckily, my mother filled me up with so many interesting things in my life. And I traveled a lot, you know, which keeps you centered. Otherwise, it's very, it, it could be very hurtful. Of course. Very difficult. I'm curious, okay. did, um, because I do want to talk about that. I call those speed bumps. You hit the speed mm -hmm. bump. Well, and and just the music. Real quick, yes. Just real quick. I just have to do the. the Station identification. <laughs> I call it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to If These Walls Could Talk with your host, Wendy Stewart and Tim Moss, and our fabulous <laughs> and wonderful guest, Louise Sorrell. <laughs> So no, now, we they um, think it was over, but it's not. We have to keep doing these. And Tim's more oh, right, yeah. than me because yeah. I have to sit here with an alarm clock. I'm not oh, kidding you, but and we, yeah, I'm the timer guy. Yeah, t t <laughs> that's Tim the timer. Okay, Tim. You heard of the tool time guy, Tim the timer. Oh. So, um, you everything was like snowballing for you, and yeah. did you hit that like wall a little bit before you started in soap operas? Is that well, it, it wasn't a, a wall. Uh, it was, uh, it just, it came up. I, I, they asked me about, did I want to, you know, go and meet these people? And I said, I'd never even seen a soap opera. Okay. Ever. Okay. Ever. So I talked to an actress, actress friend of mine and she said, you know, it, it, it's not so bad because sometimes you, you know, you get some good material and it's, constant work blah 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 but i and just i i, I want to ask you this i do remember in those days because i had come to new york in the late 70s i remember friends of mine getting on soaps mm -hmm. um marcia mccabe did you ever work no, with her i think she was someone like to live but i remember we were told it's great work um you'll you'll get commercials and things from it but once you are on soaps that's it you're not going to have any other work do you remember hearing that that well it's more likely out there because in new york they hired all these, th you know, the theater people were doing soaps, isn't it, you know, to, so they could uh -huh. for more money, right, just so they could, right. steady money. And they would hire, I worked with some, in New York, I did just a few things on, on a soap, and uh, my God, they, anybody, all the theater people were coming in, were Ruby D, we had, I mean, amazing people, but in California, I'm walking a thin line here, a lot of people who are told they're very pretty and they should be on television, 
you know, I, no, they didn't have the stuff they inside have, that no, the theater they're, but people. They're, they're okay, but yeah, the fact yeah. is that people have an attitude about them out there, about soaps out there, which is different than the one in New York. I see. Uh -huh. like, which is a soap, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that does hurt you. It yeah. does. So it's it, a pigeonhole it, out there. It is. And it's yeah. you can't complain because I'm not complaining because they paid no. me very well. And I had wonderful, luckily, I had characters that were not victims and you know, I had stuff to dig into because otherwise yeah. I don't know what I, how long I would have. Just said. real quick, as far as your Broadway, um, you starred, uh, co-starred with Rita Moreno in The Sign of Sidney um, Bruce Dean's window. window. And that yes. was 64. And then he also appeared with George C. Scott and Colleen Dewhurst as, as oh, Prince great. Lion in Winter, yes. Lion, oh my God. And, and uh, The Lion in Winter, how fabulous. I mean, they, these are powerhouses. These are were wonderful experiences, I would imagine. Was, I was so madly in love. I was married at the time. Anyway, I was so <laughs> madly in love with George C. Scott. Oh my God. Madly in love. Uh -huh. The yeah. power of that man and the... Ugh. Anyway, it was no. funny because they <laughs> he had just come back from having a um, moment or two with Ava Gardner uh -huh. and he was back with Colleen, and who is a brilliant, she's extraordinary, brilliant. Yeah. bigger than life human being. And she had a line in the play, let me see you kiss her. I want to see you kiss her because I was Alay the princess. Uh -huh. And it was like every night I would get, go up and try to smell to see how he felt that night. Oh. Was I going to get a real <laughs> kiss or was I not? And it's like, can you imagine Colleen hovering over us? And they, I knew about the Ava Gardner thing. And now I'm standing there looking at George C. Scott, who I'm like, I, I can barely Madly, breathe. madly. And she's yes. hard to say, let me see you kiss her. I, just, I mean, these moments were just. <laughs> what extra, what extra, they're surreal, really, when you think about them, right? Oh, yeah. my God. The two of them were. My husband, Herb Edelman, and I took both, them both out to dinner individually oh. and there's a lot to say about those two i would imagine oh i would imagine now i oh. i want to talk about herb too your your husband herb oh. edelman uh-huh yeah uh my big mistake anyway he was oh. the, he was the he was just everybody loved herbie everybody uh -huh. loved Herb, and you still can see him on the golden girls and everybody still loves Herbie. yes yeah yes. he played he played the um vr yeah. his ex-husband yeah son. Yeah. Uh -huh. Brilliantly talented and hilarious and uh, just an extraordinary human being. Mm -hmm. Well, I would I would love we have because um, we're going to go into your whole soap opera career. I'd love to play the clip now that we. Yes, we do have. We have a, I'm not sure where. Oh, there we go. I just okay. loved it. Uh -huh. Here we go. Don't presume to tell me how to handle myself. Look at all I've done and I'm still at large. Oh. Stefano, I always think of you when I'm going to a funeral. How many have you had? Well, knowing your penchant for drama, you'll probably show up at this one. They have no security video on us at the office when Andre was killed that night. Nobody knows what we did that night except Andre. <laughs> well, he's not talking. Stefano would have been able to handle that. Blackmailing, kidnapping, brainwashing. <laughs> These were a few of his... Favorite things. Not to mention murder. Well, the thought's never far from my mind. The grieving widow. Hey, Black. I'm speechless. It's quite an outfit, Marlena. Are you auditioning for the grieving widow? What is it with me and caskets? Andre Demira. Okay. Um, okay. We're yeah, the videos that in post afterward. He will edit them and it will be clear, a clear copy. Yeah. Definitely. Take so care. Care. Apologize for this technical. The uh, actress over here. Okay. There you go. Um, well, we, we at least got a snippet. Oh, my. <laughs> Snippiness. Snippet. Oh, my God. Snippet. Yes. I mean, it's you're funny you're because we like... commented our friend Margot Channing said, ask you about the crypt. That was one of the lines on there, the crypt. Or she says, uh, um, "No, yeah, what is it? Yeah. Jesus, that's a his, that's a famous name." Well, firstly, Margot just right. says, "Hold on, Margot's been she saying says, a lot." Margot loves you. She yeah. goes, oh, "Firstly, her first one was oh, Vivian." 
She goes, you played the best villain on days. I wanted to be Vivian. Um, you look amazing. My grandmother and I have loved, loved days and Vivian. Um, my good friend, Jenny Bookwalter says, I just realized you have Vivian. Um, Al I can't see that. Alamein. Yes. Here. Um, stay away from. Stay away from the Crips. She's the one that says it. The Crips. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, and she also said, run, Carly, run. <laughs> LOL, yes. Yeah, she's you, um, when we announced that you were coming on the show, there were so many um, comments. It, I mean, it's so great to have all of these people that. I, I don't, I'm just not aware. I, it's so well, that's why this me. is I'm so just, great I'm that flattered. not only they're, that you were able, you were an original influencer. Isn't that what we call <laughs> yes, them? Yes, right. <laughs> Yes, you I were, know. you know, an original influencer and um, such a body of work. But I think like soaps, right? Mm -hmm. They speak to people in a certain way. Maybe it's the fact that. Yeah, it's, it's they're in your you're in their living room. You're, you're in, in their, their living private room. Private lives. You're watching right, right. Watching people manipulate and things happening to them in an intimate way. Right. Right. So it, yeah. it draws people in in a different way. How did you end up like being a, a villainess in so many of I have no idea. You're like, I'm a very nice <laughs> you are a very nice person. She's absolutely She's pathetic. And yeah. But well, um, firstly, just firstly, yeah. thank you for tuning in to If These Walls Could Talk with your host, Wendy Stewart and Tim Moss and our very nice villainess. Our guest, <laughs> Louise, Louise Sorrell. <laughs> I think I have so, go ahead. that question. Yes. You don't play a villainess. I had no idea it was a villainess. I was just a woman getting through. You know what I mean? I love that. I'm it's fun. Just, who's certain people politically <coughs> right now don't think of themselves as villains, and they are. So, but they don't say that. They don't think they're that. Right. And they so brainwashed other people to think that they're not. That's right. There you so go. So that's well, you're not a villainess. You're you're a person going through life, doing somewhat questionable things on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, and just trying to get what you want. That's what mm -hmm. villains do. Right. They, they don't think they're villains. Do you know what I mean? I don't think yeah. No, no, it's it's true. It's a good question. I mean, it's, I, you're not a, I mean, you don't think of yourself that way. You just think you're going in and you're doing, you're trying to get something done and you want something. And so you go about doing it the way you do it. And it turns out to be rather obnoxious. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I totally love that definition. Rather obnoxious and not really great for everybody else. Let's say that. Right? The app is not great for everybody else. But it is interesting to me, um, following your career, that that's how you were cast and that's how you were yeah, seen. But, it. but only the, only these. The, right. These in these I roles. Was a, I was an ingenue for right. a year. I mean, she I was, was a, right. a lot of other stuff. Right. Uh -huh. Anything like this. Yeah. It's, it's just as you, I guess, the age process. I developed into my mother. I about <laughs> we that. all turn into our mothers. Are you kidding? Well, and then I was my mother, who was not exactly a villainous. But, you know, she had that whatever it is that comes out of me is really coming from what uh -huh. I inherited. Well, you know, as, it, as you age, it, it's interesting that you use the word, um, I don't know, aging in this industry, um, which is something that like, I will never wrap my head around because the, the greats, the really great perform, you, you can't do the that amazing stuff because you haven't lived life long enough when you're that, mm -hmm. that ingenue women get into their 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. 70s. My God, the. And I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. The substance in them is just because they're female is bigger than a male could ever encompass. So why should there be this ageism? No, well, it's it, that's a word I don't really. Right. But we hear it. But, why? I mean, look at, all right, I'll just bring up an obvious Rita yeah. Moreno. Amazing. I mean, please. Jesus. She's I phenomenal. Know. She's phenomenal. Yeah, and, legendary. And, and Judith Anderson, who was then, when she came on, on Santa Barbara, she was 86. Mm -hmm. something like that maybe right. a little more and uh you know she it, it's you bring with you whatever you are now and you know but isn't that every in england they do a lot more with with adults in their writing and as Good. you can see they hire women of substance uh and it's not about ageism there we right. have a big mm -hmm. issue with that here right Right. Uh, you you are yeah. totally right. But and that is very, very good to hear. Um, you know, again, so many people, Betty White sustained it, yeah. Angela Lansbury mm -hmm. sustained yeah. it. B. Arthur. 
sustained mm-hmm. it. There should be hundreds more because there are on that level yeah, and their they names, they're not it. right. They're not writing for them. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm curious just from your experience, um, like I've seen uh, Drew Barrymore and um, the one that played L Woods in uh, oh. what uh, his name, you know oh, who I mean. Um, Oh my oh, God! Yeah, what, right. Witherspoon, what are we Reese about? Witherspoon. Right, Reese Witherspoon. Yes. So now you see women in their forties, and, and they're, they're smart. They're producing. Now. They're producing. They're writing, and mm-hmm. they're putting on a lot of female. So, in your estimation, because you've seen a lot, don't you think that's going to be the big game changer? I don't. We know. hope. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, a lot of actresses that we don't know are do- producing. I mean, you know, you don't necessarily hear their names a lot, right? But they are. But I. Th- I th- never was that way. I mean, this is wonderful. Right. I mean, women didn't produce years and years and years ago, but now they are. And they're smart. And yeah. they've made a name for themselves and they can do that. And it's great. And it, and it's totally yeah. great. I always, now when I go, I always look at the credits. If it's like a fe- what I call a female centric yeah. film, right, Tim? Uh-huh. I always look at who the credits are and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. You know, yeah. <laughs> produced by, and it, it you know, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. You're right. It's really, I think, opening up a lot of doors for people. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to veer a little bit to the, well, not to the left or to the right, but <laughs> I happen to find out that uh, Louise is an animal advocate. I was going to, that's there what I'm Right. And my friend, uh, Sue. But we're, we've got only a few couple minutes left. So go ahead okay. and okay. just but mention But it's not that. really a couple of minutes because then we do at the station identification, then we still go for 15 more but, minutes. Yeah, we've got, <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that further, but yeah. just please touch on that and bring that up. Right. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, how have you're an animal person? How has that affected you in your in your career? Like, I, and I'm I'm talking even from me personally. My nugget is my my balance. He is my heart. I have a daughter and a husband, but it's my nugget, right? My long haired chihuahua, yeah. and my friend Suze, who's watching. She's got two chihuahuas. How has has your baby affected you? Well, I've had nine dogs. You have uh-huh. one. wow. And uh, I've never been without, I uh, I was without, when I left home, I had a collie. I grew up with a collie. You grew up with Lassie. Yes. It was my beautiful, favorite show. Beautiful dog. Anyway, from on, when, at 24, when I was married to Herbie, he brought home the first dog I had after my collie dog. Named, we named her Electra. I was into the Greeks. Um, <laughs> uh, she, last, she was 15. Dean when I lost her mm-hmm. but after that I had dog after dog I've had two wheat and terriers never I've never been without a dog since then ever right. and they are all very... companions. yeah oh there I mean well I wrote a po- you know I wrote this poem. yeah and and um, and that's yeah. that's what I'm getting into Louise actually bought some she writes of course she writes mm-hmm. and she wrote a, be- a beautiful poem about um do you want to read it now it's up to you. Yeah. Um, can yeah. we do that in the? Can we do that in the? Uh, yes, uh, the, the post, right? Yeah, in the post. Um, yeah our animals definitely um, they balance us out and they stabilize us. This in, in an is- odd way. In an odd way, in my opinion, yeah. animals make us more human. Oh, totally, Tim. That they is very out, well they bring out the humanity in us. Right. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, That's why a certain person, POTUS person, I know should have. Several dogs. <laughs> but in yeah. some people, Louise, but, yeah. I think they could have a herd of dogs and it wouldn't, no, uh, have it wouldn't make a difference. Have them eat him, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, um, I just, again, I want to thank you very much for being our guest today. Um, but I also just want to mention that you have made appearances and, and uh, on several classic television shows like Dr. Kildare and uh, Route 66, The Rat Patrol, The Virginian, uh, The Fugitive, Night Gallery, The Bold yeah. Ones, Ganachek, Hawaii Five O, and the list goes on and on. Da, 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 I just, just want to say thank you very much for your contribution to American yeah, sure. entertainment. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. I, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I think that's wonderful. Me. There aren't that many William people Shatner. who have accomplished what you have accomplished. I, I love William Shatner. He's, I do too. He's a he's a great guy. He is, I mean, and, and another person that's sustained. He just sustained. Yes, yes. I with him. I didn't know that. Yeah, 
he's a horseman and we did a, an mm-hmm. event out in california uh out in burbank i guess it was yeah he's a good rider. i don't know that he's riding anymore but i rode with him did back. you really yeah. wow so wow. cool well again thank you so very much how can people find out more about you do you have a website or you uh... tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> Tim and, Tim and I will give you the website for a price. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I, I do like to write. That's kind of where I express mm-hmm. a lot of things. But um, I don't know if somebody wants to. I, I don't know. How do they? I would. Do you have a website? No. Okay. Yeah. Facebook. Um, anything? Pardon me? A Facebook profile. Oh, I was turned off of Facebook three times by Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, God. <laughs> Louise has been in Facebook jail for 30 days at a time. That's actually as many times since our friend Kobe Cole has been. You must jail. have had a you must have had a few Vivian moments there. Hey, so. Well, <laughs> we're actually Louise moments <laughs> and expressing how she feels about a certain song. I love that. Well, again, I we thank you so very much, Louise Sorrell. <laughs> thank you for joining us here on If These Walls Could Talk. It has been an absolute joy. So this is where we wait. Okay. Now, no, now, now. Okay. That, that is the end of the, of the broadcast that will be televised. Now we can just take the gloves off and chat for a little while. We're still rolling. We're still airing. Right, we're still rolling. So, um, yeah, we so watch what to say. <laughs> we started to talk about Louise's writing. She did bring a, she yeah. brought a piece. Well, I would love to hear this poem. The yeah. Piece. Can we do the dog do piece? The dog piece. Okay. I, I'd love that, to do the that mother. I print it out. So <laughs> I put it on. Can I did a, a piece on my mother too, which I have. Yes, it's like great. A we can yell. Yeah. Yes. And I, I wanted to talk about your parents as well. Yeah. Okay. You want me to read the, the dog poem? Yeah, the oh. dog poem would be and, great. And your mother poem. Okay, yeah. this is dog poem. <laughs> Sometimes I hover like a lioness over her cub, ears twitching for the little one's next breath, shifting my paws, tilting my head to glance his small body, and ready to pounce at the slightest, t- uh, hint. slightest hint of helplessness. I inhale his essence as if to swallow him up for fear some other force will come and usurp him, tear him away and leave me bereft and full of remorse. Mm. Wow. Wow. What's um, um, what's your parents? Let's talk. That's Wolf Wolf. That poem was about Wolf Wolf. Yes. Can we talk about your parents? Now your mother, um, Jean, Jean Sorrell and your father, Albert, Albert J. Cohen. Yeah. They were both in the business, correct? Well, my father was, he was a film producer, but my mother had, in the 30s, was uh, pronounced the new Garbo. Wow. Uh, Amazing. Right. However, she unfortunately met my father. Ah. That career. Yeah. (laughs) But she was also a concert pianist and a painter. Wow. What a creative. Yeah, incredible career. But obviously, you know, it it was passed down. I got something of it. Oh, come on. (laughs) Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, just hearing you pick Amazing. up that paper and read that yeah. poem, the passion and the depth. Oh, I could listen okay. to you all day. Oh, my well, God. You, you well, you can because have we have another piece here that <laughs> is about her mother. Which yes, is- well, I'd love to hear about the, about your mother, Jean, Jean These Sorrell. Things the things that interest me, you know, more than, I don't know, like credits and stuff. Anyway, this is called Photo Interruptus. Um, <clears throat> I have eaten my mother. Yes, I have swallowed her whole, even the parts I don't like. That's probably the reason for my stomach ache. Hmm. Those raw pieces Mm. of her that are lodged somewhere in my abdomen. Wow. The hell with that. I'll start as a a copy of her and then peel away the onion and find Louise. I can put on airs and tilt my head at a certain la-di-da angle, just like she can. I watch her move about with her Mussolini strut and her beautiful head, chin up, owning her beauty. I can do that. Well, maybe not as well at 16. I study her hands as they play Rachmaninoff and sit at her feet as she presses the pedals of our grand piano. I'm in our living room. It's much too formal for my young eyes. It's filled with overstuffed chairs in an unpleasant shade of green. They're comfortable but foreboding as they are usually encased in plastic. Couch is square, a sort of nondescript gray, and also suffocating from plastic. There's a very large, ornate mahogany table with massive legs that holds two glass lamps and a sculpted bowl that holds 
nothing. Mm -hmm. The piano occupies this entranceway, a shiny black Steinway grand. It's immediately inside as you open the magnificent double doors to the living room. The best part of the room for me is the couch length mirror that reflects the whole room. I can spend hours dancing in front of it, miming singers and studying my own reflection as I move. My mother joins me on occasions in her moments of frivolity, and we traipse through the living room, dining room, kitchen, den, and back again, dancing to the beat of jungle drums. This rapturous event has come from classes we both take at the Lester Horton School of Dance. Wow. Great dancers that issued from there, Martha Graham, Jeffrey Holder, Judith Jameson, etc. Catch you up later on that one. Yeah. What I really don't like about that living room is that there are two fireplaces and neither of them work. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? Doesn't that say a lot? A non-working fireplace in a huge house with all the trimmings of grandeur. I've been kept under lock and key, or so they think. No lipstick allowed, no dating, ice milk instead of ice cream, can you imagine? Somber colored sweaters and shirts. Shorts? My father would rather I were locked up but I wore them. He balked. I stormed out. I have borrowed attitude from my mother. Uh -huh. Having eaten her, I can bring it up whenever necessary. Can you see the defiance in my glance, the tilt of the head, the adult looming in the interior? Yes, that's me. I love this. Wow. Oh my God. That what is incredible. A, a and I love, I love how, you, how you've described yeah. your digestion of your right. mother. Uh huh. And and how did you come upon the concept of eating your mother? I don't know. <laughs> That's amazing. It's amazing, uh -huh. Tim, right? Because that becomes a part of you then. Uh huh. Right. You know, we all. You know, you hear your friends say, "Oh my God, I sound just like my mother." Right. Right. We all yeah. have that. We, we, that's what we but but digesting the essence of who this woman is okay mm -hmm. and the picture that you painted of your mother the the two fireplaces that don't work the overstuffed chairs you know how mm -hmm. how you saw the thing the very things your mother loved mm -hmm. and then the two of you are dancing together that's yeah. in a moment of of being frivolous which I, what i get from this your mother was not frivolous oh god no yeah very oh, serious god. right oh well she was from egypt ah so, yeah, it's a totally different culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, and she was extraordinary. Extraordinary. Oh, ex extraordinary. A couple more, a couple more, yeah, or a couple more uh, comments. comments. We, we have so um, many. E. B. Claudia says, wonderful guest, well known over here too. She's in Germany, I believe. Yep. Right? Yep. Oh, um, yeah. Nick Lyon says, oh my God, the poem. Uh, the poem about her mom is shatteringly brilliant and poignant. Yes. Ooh. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Uh, uh, Margot Channing says beautiful. Um, and Margot also is, that's her drag persona. And she oh, says, when I do drag, I look like my mother and sister. Oh, see, I never knew that. I love that. You would love Margot Channing. Too. Well, and B, B. Claudia says, great reading. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was Thanks. fabulous. That. Yeah, that was. Um, thank you so much for for sharing that. Yeah. With us. So, um, when did you write these pieces? They're very different. Yes, um, I can't give you actual timing on these things uh, because I just write them and I put them in. I don't know when. I, I'd have to look at the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the date that I. So it's I like jur journaling, like, like yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But it, I have to do it when I when it comes to me. And right. I'm not, I've written a book called. <laughs> I had a Wheaton Terrier named Madison, mm -hmm. and I wrote a book called Madison on Fifth. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and I was so lucky because John, you know, John Lahr, Bert, Bert Lahr. Bert Lahr's, yeah. Son, Jane Lahr, daughter of, uh -huh. those two, of him. Well, she wants to, she came to me to, to publish this book, and I, at, just before COVID, uh -huh. and I dropped it. I just didn't. Oh, goodness. Uh -huh. And I, now I really want to, it's just such a charming book. Uh, I mean, it's a children's children's book it's what that's uh, wonderful though yeah. yeah madison on madison fifth. on fifth i that's love the great. title so you'll pick it up now now is i it, gotta do it I yeah you gotta do uh, it absolutely. absolutely those are good things that we want to get in the world you know the um our our furry animal babies we want to tell mm. the world about them that's uh it's a good time to pick so it up you, you had mentioned that you did a uh uh, uh uh event with with uh william shatner um that was a uh, for animal rights and and what are some of the other things that you've done for animal rights 
Well, I, you know, I, I, well, I've done, it's just all over the place. Uh -huh. um, in Los Angeles, I was walking dogs that were, you know, waiting to be adopted or whatever. Oh. Near where I lived in Westwood, I would walk, you know, because oh, they very needed, cool. needed yeah. to be walked. Uh -huh. Aside from, of course, the usual of giving money. Um, a friend of mine in New York was doing several events for animal shelters um, that we got involved with. And we would have big lunches and, and raise money, you know, to help animals it I, i'm sort of all over the place i'm a big that. elephant lover yes same so i was at the sheldrick foundation in kenya i oh my, I, I know david wow. sheldrick I've, i know david sheldrick i worked in um thailand and oh, uh quote unquote wow. and elephant incredible uh, camp it's incredible well done. they're and the elephants and oh, you know that God. they're like people their they're social like, structure I they're thinking the, i blew into the trunk of an elephant. you blew into they the trunk oh wow so when you fun. know they release the, the elephants when they've gotten yeah bigger. yeah it's david like, sheldrick is amazing oh god that was yeah i they say that you blow into an elephant's trunk they never forget you hmm. you never think that but um, I got to do that. And we were in Galdessa where these herd of elephants that were being cared for by keepers came over a hill and their milk was ready. So they were drinking their milk out of these big cans and they ran down the hill to the mud, to the bath, and just rolled around. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. where we got to be like this, you know, really. Uh -huh. that, to them. Plus, you know, in England, the, somehow rather Sheldrick found out, figured out how to make the milk because they can't drink pure milk. Right. So mm -hmm. they found out London, England was flying over um, milk that had had been soured, that they were using as part of the milk for the elephants. Because but the elephants was, could drink it. Yes. That's really, that's what, what a good was, use of right. soured milk. Yes. Wow. That's what they were doing. For them. Right. Incredible what work. Incredible. I, well, thank you for sharing that with us because oh, that's a lot the the soured milk and everything. Yeah. Um, what is it about animals that I've been this way since I'm a kid, like nuts with it. So, and you are too. What 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 is it about them that um, makes you want to defend them, innocence. take care of it? the innocence? It's the purity, yeah. right? And and right. they yeah. are what they are. Right. You know, there's there's no pretense. There's no. Yeah. They're also That's fascinating, though. Yeah. They're completely, you know, oh, she brought up elephants. Yeah. If you watch them in the wild, they're unbelievably fascinating, the way they all go around like the little elephants to pr protect mm -hmm. them. In many, in oh, many ways, um, animals are often, well, more than often, better than some human mothers. Yeah. Much better. Much, be much better. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a man who was the head of our safari, but there were several rather good looking men who were the heads running, taking us around on a safari. The, the, the main person died. I could not believe this. He lived near there, near uh, in Kenya. A pack of elephants. I know the story. I can, I can, I know the story. House <laughs> yeah. And surrounded it. They, this is a true story. Oh, I remember oh. reading it. It was some really this unbelievable. Was the man that we were working with. Yeah, I know. Oh, Oh so you got to meet him personally. He was with us. We were traveling with him. Right, right. So you wow. went, him and then when he, pe we, pe I know. I remember reading that story. Wow. I know. I know. Really it's believable. it's it's really quite incredible, and um, I love that you're sharing that with us today because I've elevated uh, animals to a quote unquote a human level in in many mm -hmm. ways, and I think mm -hmm. that's really really what has to happen. And thank you for um, bringing that out, you know, yeah. for your sharing, really. It, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it takes people to get that message out there. And I've always felt um, theatrical people, you, Angelina Jolie and people like that, I always thought, my God, how wonderful to have your celebrity, right, to spread the good and the news about what's going on in the world and to raise money because it does take money to yeah. rescue elephants, mm -hmm. rhinos, and in my area, gorillas and chimpanzees, you know, well, you know, mm. it, it takes a lot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the emotional core here today, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful, speaking of emotion and back to acting, because yes, acting, acting, right. Acting. Louise is the thing. Um, <laughs> how, how do you get into a character? Do you have a process that you do? like read the script and get an idea of the play and, or the, the movement of the character. And um, cause I have, I'm an actor as well. And I've, I've got my own process, you know, but I'm just, I'm curious. 
you know. Well, you know, it's interesting. I just I just read a piece because I just saw this movie Tar with Kate Blanchett. Oh, you saw oh, it? Yeah. I just saw yes. it. I'm from yeah. Screen Actors Guild. Oh, well, it's an amazing film. What, what I found interesting is there was an interview with her, and she talks about, and I'm kind of the same way, she doesn't talk about acting. Mm -hmm. Talk about her process. She doesn't, and it's. I I just find that some actors sit around talking about that. I'm not. I can't answer that because right. it's just you sort of just read something, and then if you you think you about feel it about it, and of course there's research if it's a particular kind of character that has right. a history of things you need to have information about. Right. But it, it, if it's something that instinctively you've you've maybe observed it in someone else, and you borrow it from them, or. Uh -huh. You know, it's a it's a touchy subject because I I'm not good at talking about it. And I remember in the neighborhood playhouse, <laughs> they gave us things like independent activities. You know, you're coming into a room, and that's legitimate. You're coming right. into a room to to resolve something, to get something. Uh huh. So that's your intention, it, right? They intention. gave that to you, right? So, what your intention was. so then I'm my teacher. Then we lost Sandy Meisner. I, I came right after Sandy Meisner left. I had David Pressman, who was a lovely man. He was the head of the, the department, of the school, actually. And he gave me some nice things to do. Many years go by, and now I find that he's directing on One Life to Live. Oh, oh wow. Teacher right? <laughs> from school. And I, we were rehearsing, and he's rushing through this thing. And you stand over there, you sit up, and you go over there. And, you're, and I went, David, what about my independent? Ah, <laughs> what's my <laughs> What's my intent? That's hilarious. That's a great story. That's great. Please, what's my know, just say the lines and get the hell out of yeah, here. Right. <laughs> what's my intention? But you know, Tim, you brought up a good point because um, I I studied theater also. Uh, all the the methods, right? Stanislavski, Lesak, where I went to college. Mm -hmm. Do you know the Le Lesak was? Oh, actually, the way you're you have such incredible speech. I could listen to you talk, but that's mm -hmm. how they were teaching actor speech oh, yes. through the Lesak method. And so many people, you've all heard, like Meryl Streep is she's a technical. I think she's an she's amazing fabulous. actress. She's fabulous, oh, but fabulous. she's technically based. And then you have other people like Chloe Savini that are more organic. I guess, Tim, like with what you're saying, like everyone's got their own process, right? For right. approaching. Well, you you yeah. figure out what works for you and for what you, you, right. you do okay. it. Yeah. You know, as we're talking about this, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. You're not. But oh. I just have to tell you this. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> the famous story at the neighborhood playhouse. A man named, he looked like Ichabod Crane. He was Mr. Williams, <laughs> the speech teacher. Mr. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> So Brenda Vaccaro, God bless her, she was late one day or something. She came. I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. My, my father died, or it was my grandmother, or something. Something in her family. With that voice, my grandmother. Died. And Mr. Williams stopped. He went, died. <laughs> Story. Right. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> died. 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 <laughs> that was the way to, you know. That's the way. <laughs> I, lo oh I love that. God. That's great. Yeah. And did she repeat? I'm wondering if she repeated it that way. <laughs> Sorry, he died. <laughs> I can't imagine Brenda Vicar saying it like that. You oh, know? God. Oh, God. I mean, just, these stories are so funny. They just, you never forget these. It's wonderful. So right. Honest, right. I have forgotten things and I, I write them down now. And when I write them, then they come back to me. But in a lifetime, yeah. in a person's lifetime, especially when you have so oh, many yeah. experiences, like, you've played so many roles, you've worked with so many people. Yeah. How, do, how do you keep track of it all? Uh, uh, I look at my credits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God somebody else is listing them, huh? <laughs> I remember what the hell I did. You know, right. I the That's why you said to me it should uh, be dead. <laughs> really? you know, when I'm just looking down here. I see Don Rickles. Don Rickles. Yes, Don oh Rickles. God. Yeah. Tell us about that. What an experience. Yeah, but think about you know, calling me a villainous. I mean, I'm not, you know, you, you got to be all over the place. Right. Don right. was a doll. He was just uh, it was the strangest experience because I, I tested for that and the wet network said what no they said no this is, she can't be his wife it made no sense huh. sam danoff and sheldon leonard fought for me right so anyway it, takes it worked because we were so opposite it was ridiculous and i just 
<laughs> like you couldn't get through anything because they'd bring Bob Newhart on the show and they couldn't look at each other. Nobody oh. could look at anybody without falling apart. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, that had it right. Look at the cast of characters. Oh, so please. my God, I, yeah. How did you even get through the script? My like, God. <laughs> and then I was, you know, I got to be around all the, they're all in comp, you know, they all compete with it. Milton Burrow. They were all, we were all in a group, and on Fairfax Avenue. Me and all these guys, <laughs> Rickles Great. and the whole gang of comedians. Wow. I, I mean, it's like, Can you I imagine where I was. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I had a couple of other experiences, like now you're starting me to talk a lot, but that I was good. I love it. <laughs> I was in Paris and I was seeing a Frenchman, as one does. Ooh la la. Yeah. <laughs> it was Christmas and he takes me to dinner at Jean Paul Belmondo's apartment for dinner. Oh. Who is sitting at the head of the table? That's a I cannot dark. tell you where my brain <laughs> was. I was the only American there, and Alain Delon was across the table. And I'm eh, and I'm thinking, oh, my mother, I gotta call my mother, I gotta call her. But mm -hmm. she wouldn't, I mean, it would just it, you know, her first language was French. And I I, I you know, it's stuck in my head forever. I, I couldn't believe where I was. Oh, wow. But, it's quite amazing. You just can't, you sort of back and think, who was that? that it was me. You know, I can't yeah. believe. Yeah, his memories. Me, little so Louise, amazing. who is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Amazing. Oh my God. Belmondo, who then had a girlfriend and he carried her little Yorkies around, one in each hand. <laughs> I love it. He, you'd see him walking down the street with this young girl that was, you know, and they were her dogs, and he would be carrying the little dogs down the street. Aww. Like a god. <laughs> like a god. You know what? While we're talking, and, and this just hit me really strong, you have never lost your sense of wonderment, even in, <laughs> in your storytelling. No, you know, people get jaded. People get hurt by things in yeah. life. And, yeah. and we all have friends, all of us, that have been knocked down and never got up. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm in you, shock. You're saying... <laughs> Louise is in shock. She never lost her sense of wonderment because, because she's in shock. You know what? It's an incredible thing, and it's a gift that you have that. Well, you have, you know, what are we going to do? We what are we to, going to do? With what's going on in this world? Right. I'll tell you, there's something going on right now that I, I'm going to say this. You, you can. That's what we do here. My closest friend is a woman named Francesca James. She was an actress on All My Children. Then she became a producer, a director. She's an extraordinary human being. She has written one of the most beautiful fairy tales I have ever heard or read. Wow. Uh, about a finch, about a oh, lady, Gilden, lady oh. Gilden, Gilden and her finch. And it's so exquisite. She's put it on tape with music because she can do everything and the story with her beautiful voice. And she needed an illustrator. It can be everything. It can be a book. It can be, it can be anything and everything. She's now, people are really interested. She had to find an illustrator. Where did she find one? In the Ukraine. Wow. Oh my and God. this girl is sitting in a shelter oh, painting. That's painting a story. Painting the most beautiful things right. you have ever seen in your life. They should be at the wow. most. Right. They are pictures of this Finch and Lady Golden. And Francesca sent oh. and translated to her in the Ukraine Amazing. what she needs specifically on a painting. And, and it comes back to and her perfect. with perfection. Yeah. And she is now not knowing whether she will live. Right. Oh my! She's, doing, she's, she's creating this amazing. beauty from a shelter where That's she could right. be killed. That's right. And her town. Wow. And we are on pins and needles now, waiting to see how, if she's going to survive. The book mm -hmm. is going to go to Knopf, and now somebody else is going to show it to somebody that would be very helpful. Yeah, it's one crossed. of the most beautiful fairy tales ever for children and adults, quite frankly. And mm -hmm. we're we're on pins and needles because. That's what's going on in the world. People are being thank you slaughtered. Yeah, and in the middle of it, they're painting. Right. How, yeah. You know yeah. how can we not yeah. carry on? Right. I, I, mm -hmm. That is an incredible example of people Absolutely. that are carrying on too. Uh, in spite and just, of and just the resilience of people, right. and also she right. is being who she is supposed to be by by with, through her art. You know, yes. she, she, she's, she's, she's still being true to herself. Right. Yes. You know, you, yeah. you make me That's think Louise, cool. though, it's easy for all of us sitting here. We, you know, our lives are not anything like what's going on in the Ukraine. And here you have, 
this is what blew me away about the Ukraine. Those those people are exactly like us. We're not talking about countries with famine or the kinds of things you see in cultures that we don't connect to. Yeah. Look at the Ukrainian people and look at their cities. Their cities, they look like where I live. Yeah. And all well, of this. And, but imagine any of us, you, me, and him, yeah. right? all of a sudden, it's like it's all, and, yeah. it's all taken away from you. Mm -hmm. How does this girl sit in a shelter and and she creates these beautiful drawings of finches? My God. It's, it's just resilient. It's, 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 it's the complete. whole thing. They're so breathtaking that you look. You think somebody from another time painted this. Uh, it's got to be in a museum, and they're they're exquisite. My grandfather's from Odessa. Ah, so, uh, so you have that connection yeah. there. But, wow. but this just happened. I mean, she found this girl, and you know she's sending her whatever she can because we're trying to help her, and she won't leave her country. Right. She won't leave. Right. Mm. They have she's a painting. Oh my God! If this book, if this book comes out, it's going to be huge. I mean, it's so breathtakingly beautiful and moving. Well, and I'm thinking we'll also get, this is what needs to happen. We all have to stop thinking, oh, it's happening over there. You know, that's what we do where it's happening mm -hmm. there. It's not affecting yeah. us. When you bring out somebody like this girl that's doing this work, and if that book is published on a high level, yeah. I mean, here you have a good example of using art to call attention to politically what's going yeah on in the world. We cannot stick our heads in the sand. And you know what I have to tell you in New York, I know a lot of people that, that do. And people are also fried. People are on overload. Oh yes. But Everybody. we still have to wake up every day. You know, I'll never stop trying to make a difference. I never nor nor will you. It's who you are. It burns. It burns inside of you, Tim, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, it it's it's up to all of us to just keep, as we say, paying it forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Well, I just, again, thank you very much for joining us here today and just for the real talk and the... the it's cathartic. The, oh, my God, I need a cocktail. <laughs> the human, humanity and, the, you know, I, right. I absolutely loved yeah. your comment here. A yeah. couple a couple of comments. Yeah, um, wonderful comments today. Um, <laughs> let me see. Jack Falan is on. He says, bravo, Louise. Um, please, uh, B. Claudia from Germany says, please do podcast and read... A, read book as your voice is so extraordinary to listen to. Oh, I love that. And she's and, also, she said she's waiting for the book and yeah. as well, she's going to rewatch. Yeah. And also Jenny Bookwalder says, you're not a villain, Louise, sweet as a nectarine. That, <laughs> that is a perfect comment yeah. to close out Absolutely. on. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Margot Channing, this has been a thrill. Yes, wow. yes. And it has been a thrill for us as well. This has just been absolutely wonderful. Thank you Thank very you. much. It's lovely speaking to you. Yes, and you're welcome back anytime, well, of anytime course. on our show. This was absolute delight. Absolute yeah. delight. Absolute Thank delight. You so much. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for Thank tuning in. Everybody who tuned in today, we'll be back next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>